What's going on? So, new video. I bet you work in the garage for a little bit already. Not gonna lie, taking her a little easy, kind of a little cleaning up. Have your old shop dog Steve out. He gets a little lonely now. We're down to one doggo. So, where I left it is the motor was hanging. It's still hanging. But I'm making a little bit of progress. So, what I managed to do, uh, if you watched uh, old Brent there, half assed last uh, video, he made a set of motor mounts that didn't work out for him. So, I scabbed those up. So I got a set of old school uh, clamshell mounts and I had a set of kind of mounts that would go into a cross member. And they're just floating in space. So this is the old school mount it would have had, which goes between the frame and the cross member. Just kind of bolted like that. So ultimately, I'm going to kind of make my own. So the motor is basically where I want it. Hopefully you guys can even see this, I guess. But uh, the mount's just sitting there and it's attached to nothing. So I need to make basically one of these. Instead of having it have this uh, goopy shape, I need to just be dead straight like that. Bolt on my mounts. And then uh, put a few bolts bolted to the frame, or maybe just weld it if I'm lazy. And it should be good. And then everything pretty much fits just on the one corner. I might have to notch the ear either the manifold or maybe just the frame a little bit just to get the, uh, the exhaust started. But really, making a fair bit of progress. The motors, I'm happy with it. The pan sits just a little, like a touch low. These things do recommend you change the pan, but eh, it's about flush, I guess. I don't know how that's going to show up. It's about flush, maybe a half inch past the cross member, the oil pan. So that's good enough for me with a truck. And then I got lots of room. Obviously, the hood's going to come straight out. So that'll be a perfect. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Unfortunately, it's probably about 8 o'clock at night and I don't have any material to make any mounts out of. Probably should have thought of that. So I'll see if I can look around me I can find something outside in the old scrap bin. Otherwise, I'm probably done for the night until I uh, get some metal tomorrow. Well, look at me. I found this old piece of junk out in the old scrap pile. This is a checker plate floor actually on the bottom side, but it should be plenty thick and strong. So I took the mount off. I kind of measured about where I want, so I'll cut a little piece out. See what I can do from there, and hopefully it works out, otherwise I'm tossing it in the garbage. The only good part about the snow you work on parts straight away ah. all right well a lot of messing around you can just kind of see everything's just all loosely bolted together but both sides are in. I'm happy with it. The motor is sitting on the on the actual mount, so I'm gonna leave the crane out because I'm still gonna have to uh, lift it up, uh, tighten everything. So uh, the plates, like the clamshells and all that, on the block itself are just real loose. I didn't know if I'd take it off a bunch of times, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it. it. Looks all shitty and rusty. It just kind of suits the rest of the truck. Floor jack still under it. Obviously, the uh, transmission is just kind of dangling in space. So maybe tomorrow after work, I'll pick up a little bit of steel. I'm thinking just some sort of like, you know, square tubing running across. I gotta get a mount for it actually too. I thought I had one, but I do not. This transmission is missing. I must have taken it off, robbed it, put something else. So I gotta get one of the uh, a rubber mount, but that should be able to kind of get that all dealt with. Set some sort of pinion angle or, or you know, angle of the uh, motor and transmission, give it a couple degrees. And I'll be happy with it. And then I can start dealing with that rat's nest of wiring actually won't be too bad and I might even try and kind of snake the exhaust this side will be real easy the other side goes right into the frame so I'm gonna have to kind of MacGyver it around a little yeah I think it looks pretty sweet then I can radiator in catch tank all that kind of screwing around and yeah 
in the fuel system. That's going to be a pain in the ass. But that's it for night. It's getting late. It's nappy time. I'll see you guys tomorrow. What's going on, guys? So I'm back at it. I messed around the garage just a little bit, charging the GoPro. So, I mean, the engine crane's put away, hopefully for a while. Uh, I got the motor mounts on properly, like everything's all tight and bolted up. Uh, so I'm happy with them. I do have to jack it up. I got a transmission cross member in there that I'm not stoked on, but I want to make sure it's good and then drill some mounting holes in the frame for it. Uh, I put the radiator in just like, you know, real janky. Just so it kind of fits off the modify either these brackets or use these top ones. But I think I might just zip those off and use the factory style. I put the uh, kind of air filter on. So it's going to end up right where the battery is. So I don't know what I'm going to do there. I think I might, if I can try and move the battery onto this side where there's nothing, build a little bracket. And then that'll be good. Maybe I can get away with that. Because I still have this uh, puke tank for the radiator. And I'm hoping I can just kind of put it somewhere in about there. So I think that's where it is on these trucks. You know, I'll do a little Googling and see where stuff is just so the lines kind of work out. But I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes. So... Otherwise, I mean, the motor's in. I'm kind of happy with it. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to get this thing up in the air, finish off the motor mounts underneath. I was just going to put a couple little welds on it, just just to double check, be happy with it. Make sure the transmission cross member is happy, like I said, and the transmission is at the proper angle. When I had it in there, it looked like it was pretty close. It was lined up because the old drive shaft still in here, actually, the two piece. So it seems like it's doing pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull out this hanger bearing, uh, pull the drive shaft out. I'm probably going to have to slit uh, this little cross member just down because obviously when I move the rear end ahead, uh, that's going to be in the way. Yeah. Otherwise, start cleaning some of this junk off, maybe take the shocks off. The, uh, today's Tuesday. The bedsides are supposed to be here, I think, Friday. So I'd like to have a lot done there. So i got to finish that other cab corner and start working on the inside again, which is kind of lame. I don't really want to do that. So... I don't know. Work on the hood a little bit more, just kind of get some wiring going just for fun. Maybe, uh, you know, get the fuse block out, make it just look less shitty. Start cleaning up in here a little bit. So I'm getting motivated again now that the motor's in. It looks kind of cool. And I got to get some tires on this thing. And this one wheel's locked up, so it's a pain to move. So up in the air, take that apart, see what the deal is, and get it rolling. All right. Jack this sucker up. Uh, actually, all it was was the. Uh, the caliper was a little seized there, so I just kind of cranked it out with a, a C-clamp, and now it's happy. It's got this uh, groove in it, which I assume must be machined in as factory. It's like that on both sides. Actually, there's a lot of meat left on the on the pads, and I looked at the upper and lowers. Everything looks like it's uh, ball joint-wise. The upper ball joints, they're bolted in, so if these ones were riveted in originally, they've been changed at some point. The rubber lines are cracked with the rubber hose, the brake line. But hey, whatever, it's good enough. I can put the wheel back on. At least now it'll roll because that was a pain in the ass. Even all the rubbers in the sway bars don't look like they're all kind of mangled out. So, yes, yeah, so they must have had some sort of maintenance at some point in its life. But uh, not like it's going to get any more for me. Yeah, I'm going to bolt this sucker back together and I can at least roll it ahead a little bit. And I'll probably give it a once over at some other time. So a bunch of boring wiring later, but this is now how simple this thing is. So I clean up the harness, just kind of tape it back together. These four wires were all those pink wires. So I, you know, uh, put them all together. So this one is PCM, for instance. This one's O2 math and a few miscellaneous ones. And the other two will be uh, driver side coil. And the other one will be passenger side coil and injectors on each side. All the grounds put together as ground, very simple. These two uh, orange ones, so they're constant 12. So I just put that on its own wire. So that's that. And then this green wire is going to be a 12 volt to the relay, I assume, for the uh, fuel pump to get power. And then purple is starter. So that's it. These are the two connectors there that go to the computer. A few people asked, uh, Brent actually has HP tuner, so I paid him to unlock it. I didn't film it, but all he did was turn off the VATS, which is the like security system, the rear O2s. I think that was all he really did. 
So ultimately that's ready to go so I can hook that up inside where I want to mount that and go from there. So now I've got to go through and make sure everything is all connected, all the little sensors and stuff like that that I'm going to use. Uh, tape up some wiring and stuff. Uh, people are asking about O2 so the rears are gone. The uh, fronts, they're on the exhaust which I got. So that's just like where I, you know, it'll click on to the, the manifold. And that's where the front O2s are. So I have both of those. So I just kind of connect all that. Tie up the transmission wiring somewhere kind of fancy underneath. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of it. I mean, it looks like shit right now, but uh, an evening of cleaning some stuff up, it'll look a thousand times better. So I'm going to keep going on that and uh, yeah, make some progress. Well, Making lots of progress, but uh, slow moving. So the motor's still in, all that. I got the drive shaft pulled. Of course, every single bolt fought me on that, but that's out. So kind of you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to have to zip out the bottom of that where the hanger bearing was because the uh, rear end's going to be closer and the drive shaft's probably going to want to hit that. So I think that's, uh, that's it for me tonight. Tomorrow we'll be back at it. Uh, probably do some more wiring, maybe hook up the exhaust a little bit, do the O2s, get that kind of finished up, uh, I'm hoping. And then after that, my plan is to start figuring out what I'm going to do at the rear end. So I'm going to have to get the uh, truck leveled on all four corners and stuff like that, and start uh, grinding out some of those rivets and move the rear end ahead, but that'll be the next video. So, we'll be back out tomorrow. While I'm gone, subscribe to the channel, get a Coke. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, so next day, unfortunately I uploaded uh, the clips from last night on my computer and one of them didn't uh, go well, which is the one where I was kind of explaining the wiring. So I guess you already saw it, it would probably make a whole lot of sense. So ultimately what happened was in this jumble, all those pink wires, I had broken them up into a few different sections. So I don't know if it'll kind of be clear on the next one. But I did left side, right side of the motor on each, each set. So I twisted, you know, four or five wires together, put a connector on, and then into the heavier duty red wire. So that's kind of a, just to bring up speed, that's what I did. So that's how this thing, realistically, the motor should run with this and then a couple of those wires in the computer. Uh, I pulled the radiator out. I ended up pulling the uh, battery box out, or the battery tray, I should say. So that's where I'm going to have the air filter sit. And I'm hoping I can just put the battery on this side with some sort of a Princess Auto or something like that tray or I'll do something. So this is just kind of miscellaneous. We got to build a bracket for that or something down the road. I want to get the radiator in. I'm going to get the catch tank wherever I put it somewhere in. Or at least, you know, kind of about to uh, get it all situated together. Start trimming the radiator so it'll fit. Get the hoses hooked up. And then I can start going through this wiring, get it all laid out in the motor. There's a couple of wires that were kind of cut, which I want to just go over and uh, tape up. And then I might even put the exhaust on, make sure that's going to fit in the frame because it was a really tight fit. I had to notch the top of the frame on both sides. And I got a new O2 sensor. Yeah, so I'm hoping I can get that kind of dealt with and maybe even put the fuse block in or at least kind of get that situated so I know exactly where that's going to go. And be done. With this part of the video anyways, or this part of the build so i'm not gonna be perfect but i want to do that because i'm getting those box sides in a couple of days and those are gonna be big and bulky and i don't want to have them sitting around because i will dent them and i paid up for them so that's what i'm doing lots of progress so air box is in yak tanks in everything's hooked up the radiators in the hoses are in nothing is tight everything's just kind of sitting there i got the wiring all happy so uh, whatever's going to go underneath for O2s and transmission is down there. Everything else is clicked in up top. I do have to get uh, this little piece broke off. So I got the JB weld. This is for the uh, a vacuum uh, port at the back of the intake. For it would have been for power brakes. I don't have that. So I'm just going to glue it in, cap it off. I pulled the battery tray out of that side. Uh, I'm going to put it in here. I should be able to just tag in to the core support. Kind of zip this off. A little self tapper, a nut and bolt into the fender, and that'll be good. Which actually works out great because the battery, these are on this side, so I can do that. Battery will be mint. Uh, like I said, all the wiring's going down, everything's happy there. I got to do a few uh, grounds yet, but that's nothing. I have, this is, whoa. 
So this is the computer. So both things are hooked up. Again, this has been flashed through HP tuner, so that's good. I have my wires that I'm going to use. So this one here, I'm going to run that right to the back of the alternator because it needs constant power. And then these are the ones that are going to go with a fuse block and one ground. I'll just tag that in anywhere. I'm thinking I'll probably just put this right about there somewhere where it won't be interfering with the hood hinge. And just put like a couple of you know, straps, build a little thing that holds it over. So I mean, it looks a hell of a lot more organized now without a whole lot more work. Unfortunately, I've run out of parts. So I gotta get a fuse block, some self tappers, uh, some miscellaneous tape, uh, a few little odds and ends. So I'm gonna run over to Princess Auto real quick. Get a few things, should be able to come back. I did have the exhaust, so uh, one side fits with the uh, the little piece of the O2. One side we have to chop and kind of bend over so it comes out of the frame. But really that shouldn't be too, too much work. I'll do that another time. But tonight I should be able to have this all kind of located where I want it, all secured down, and it's just a odds and ends. So I'll hit up the parts store real quick. I'll be back shortly. So there she is in all her glory. Pretty simple, uh, you know, we got some parts there. I ended up putting the battery tray on the other side, got it bolted in so it's happy. Uh, the computer's just temporary mounted with this little strapping. I'll build a proper bracket for it once I get the hood on. I assume once the hood goes down, all this is gonna fit in there. So I wanna make sure that's all happy before I go too crazy. Uh, I put this little fuse panel in there, I marked on the firewall with marker, uh, what everything is. So it's basically factory. Uh, ground wire, I have my fuel pump relay wire, and then the starter will be in there. This is the wire that goes to uh, constant 12 volt, so that's going to the back of the alternator. Otherwise, everything's working out pretty good. The battery, you know, where the uh, wires are should be happy. <clears throat> this is the factory uh, truck throttle cable, so I'll have to figure out joint to the other one somehow. And the kick down's on the other side. That's just sitting there, I'll have to deal with that as well. But, uh, you know, I did that in 57, that actually worked out pretty good. Got a shorter belt for this thing. Same thing I did in the 57 with the uh, power steering delete. The radiator's secured, it's in there. Uh, you know, I just moved the uh, little tie downs where I wanted them and then I just spaced out the little rubber pucks at the bottom. I made a little bracket for the uh, catch tank. I haven't done anything for the air filter yet, so I still gotta worry about that one. Overall, the motor's in there. I mean, it's 90% uh, done. Needs a little bit of wiring, a little bit of screwing around. But uh, that's where I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, it's not going anywhere. I'm happy with it. i got to start working on this uh, rear end, whatever I want to do, because the box sides come Friday. Today is it's Wednesday night, so i got tomorrow to clean up the garage, get everything kind of ready to go, and i got to pick these things up, and I don't want them to be sitting around, so I don't want to get them all beat up. So I'm going to jack the truck up, clean up here a little bit, a little bit. Jack the truck up, make sure it's dead level, so then I can mark out when I uh, move the shackles ahead on the frame. I know everyone hates that I'm doing that. You guys all think I should chop the frame under the cab section, all those things. Uh, yep, yeah, seen that, been there, done that. I don't want to do it. I want it to be a little different, see if this is possible. Just by moving it ahead and making a little bracket at the front. And then make the box sides, make it all fit. I'm just gonna use a plywood bed uh, floor and I got brackets or uh, cross sections. So I should be able to make that all work. I want to test fit all that. If it's all good, then I'll take it all apart and I can finish off the cab, but uh, this thing's going to come together in a hurry at this point now, I'm hoping. I mean, motor trans are in. Uh, once we get the rear end ahead, I can measure for a drive shaft, get all that taken care of, and see brake lines, little stuff like that. Yeah. So that's it for me tonight and for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Kind of a uh, little once over how to get an LS in by uh, butchering some mounts and the wiring all together. But it's in, it's happy. I'll be back at doing more sheet metal. So like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, all those things. And... Uh, See you guys on the next one.